Seems it should be in that building. Ah. I see. Hey. Hey, cut that out. Sir. 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 Whoa. Mmm, fill that blood meter. There we go. Oh, there's a Pruin exterminator. Not what I want to see around here. Ah, uh, yes, a tiny, a tiny pile of fucking barrels. That's what blocks it. Oh shit, they're destructible. <laughs> You're very lit up like I can use you. No? Not this time. Ooh. Just warp on up. Is that- that's open almost like I've opened it before. Oh. Na another naked butt Blanca. Something about the color scheme makes me think of Blanca instead of a werewolf something odd about how it looks. Ooh, hello. A used hatchet. I'm sure it's great. The weapons called used are usually really good. Just ignore the part where when you upgrade it, the word used goes away completely. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Much better. Hey there. You doing alright? Alright. Quite the ragdoll he's got going on. <laughs> Even when it's a giant werewolf, it still has to make sad dog noises when you hit it. I'm like, oh, damn it. Don't make me do this. Man, RP video games are a terrible universe for, for the existence of stairs. Just the worst stair makers in all of existence are all in video games. Like, they make them to break. It's a racket they got going on there, where they're like, they'll make all the money off of having to rebuild it. And rebuild it and rebuild it. Then the moment society falls, all the stair makers skip town because they're notorious cowards. And so nobody's here to fix all the stairs. And suddenly everyone has to pay for their, their con that they've been running. So none of you guys were fighting the fucking werewolf monster that was in this room? None of you know- do you guys not notice him? Or what? Wow, that guy really took a hit. Hey there. No, thank you. What's he shooting at me, garlic? My new garlic mist attack. Ow. Don't you try to spray me. I don't appreciate being sprayed. Oh, that wasn't enough. Yes. I like how I killed the other ones without even targeting them. They just stood close enough and were significantly more vulnerable to smoke, uh, shadow than he was. So they went down without having to even be looked at directly. Satisfying. You think I'd be able to, sit, like, get some handles out of the crap that they're using? And, like, Salvage a handle out of whatever they have as equipment. Is this what I broke earlier? Yep. Die barrels. Yes. Surrender to my might.
What, did they convince themselves that he was a vampire? Was he? I don't, he might have been uh, one of the scowls or whatever they're called. Or just some dude that was drunk and they're like, well, better kill that guy. Wow. Just like that, I looped right back around in, into society without actually finding the item I wanted. There's so much danger right around the corner. It's amazing that they even function as a society. I mean, they don't. They basically don't, to be fair. I missed this item. I'm looking for Barrett Lewis's box. They're making me fight for it, huh? Does it say it's down for me? So I think it seems to indicate that I'm too high right now. But I think it also intentionally has like a search radius. Who left this lantern on? Now I'm asking the real questions. I haven't been back here yet. Oh, shit. <laughs> now. Well, that was a bad call. He doesn't take damage to the from the explosion when I grab him. My bad. Boy, is that effective. How many creatures like this around here? Are, is this main full of bone spikes? God damn. Hope that wasn't his box. <laughs> Lewis. Lewis, where's your box? Can I get like a recap on the quest or something? He had to drop his package and he would like to retrieve it. Is basically all that's going on here. I'm just not seeing it, I guess. There's not that much to it. Although he said he had to drop it, so it may not be politely stacked somewhere. It may be in, like in the middle of the courtyard or somewhere like harder to spot. Ah, there's a shelf up here. This could be the box Lewis thought he lost. <laughs> there's a letter inside. How the fuck did this guy run up here to escape something? Lewis said he dropped it on the way out, and that's not anywhere near the way out. I have questions. Oh well, I found it. I found it. I found it. That was kind of annoying. Barrett, there's no easy way to say it, so I'm going to be blunt. We can't keep on like this. At least I can't keep on like this. If Joe ever finds out about us, about his wife and his best friend, it will crush him, and then he will kill you. We had some good time together, but let's face it, I'm never going to be your Jane Lewis. You know it, and I know it too. So I'm ending this, right here and right now. If you agree with my decision, I'm sure we'll find a way to be happy again. You, Joe, and me in time. And then the most important part of our story will have been preserved. Until that day, I wish you'd forgive me. Goodbye for now. Jane Peterson. Holy shit, I actually thought that might be the case. I couldn't help but notice that the sun looked- I thought the sun looked too much like the other guy. And the other, the other guy was like, get out of here! Whenever he showed- whenever they hung out together. Like, there, like he wanted the sun away. And I think it's- and I, I, was, I, was, I was like, is it because it's his son?
A love letter from Joe Peterson's wife addressed to Barrett Lewis. Who should I give it to, I wonder? He sounded amused when he phrased it that way. Who should I give it to, I wonder? Give it to Barrett Lewis or Joe Peterson. Why can't I give it to Harry Peterson? <laughs> it's his fucking secret. Ah. Ah. I don't like this whole business. Uh, fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? I found this box in an abandoned building nearby. I believe it belongs to you. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is mine. So, you faced those loons that roam around there. Extraordinary. I suppose I was lucky. Luck is a commodity round here. Yours should be properly rewarded. About this package, it's not just tools and trinkets, is it? I want to be rude or anything after your kind gesture, but it's none of your business. Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. Do you mean... You're Harry's father. No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Naughty, naughty. What if I went over here and told Mr. Joe? You again? What do you want this time? I wonder if that's even an option. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. I was curious, but no, it's not an option. Rest to evolve. It's very evocative language. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. How the hell do I get mesmerized level two? Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Totter. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. I just come in with like a fur hat in the Communist Manifesto. manifesto. <laughs> like, let me in, brother, uh, comrade. We fight for the same side. Da? <laughs> the antique figure of the Vry Vrykolakis. Of my many journeys, I believe I was the most amazed by the exploration of the Mediterranean Isles, in particular the island of Santorini. Searching for traces of vampire presence in these sunburnt lands, Herodotus himself refers to the island in his fourth book, 
and I'm personally convinced that there are many mysteries to be unveiled in this part of the world. Who knows that even today, the island of Santorini is still considered to be considered by some as the most vampire-infested place in the world. Way more than the Carpathians. And that its inhabitants are considered as specialists of the vampire hunt. Or the hunt of Vricolacus, as they call this creature. According to the local myths, the Vricolacus is a dead person who does not decay. And who can show a vermilion complexion as long as he is gorged with fresh blood. He cannot enter a house without knocking and getting a response. Garlic makes him flee. He does not consume under the sun, but his skin blackens. He can change into wolf and other animals. What struck me at the most is that the name, the same name exists with small variations from Mediterranean Sea to the Balkans. The Greek call him the Vrikolakas. The Bulgarians call the Bulgarians and the Macedonians name him Varkolak or Versolak. The Serbians call him Vukudlak. Vukudlak? Yes, Vukudlak, a name so similar to Vulkod that we already know, my, my dear brothers. Just to write the few words now gives me the shivers. I'm personally convinced that we are here confronted to some proto vampire. Maybe they are missing link between the modern vampires and the creatures that came before them. If God allows me enough time, I wish one day to go back to the Santorini Island and find the trail of this antique and forgotten figure. From Drinking at the Fountain of Knowledge by Usher Talltree, Primate of St. Paul. Someone's going through the history of the vampires. It's locked, all right. Interesting that the uh, I'm Interested in Vampires article is right here in this building. I could just go through their shit right in front of them. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane? Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough and clever, too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Procescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. This war won't last forever. 
Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. It is not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. There's something slightly off about it. I, I think it's... It's probably just the, the sound filter. But it's just... There's something that really feels weird about the whole, like, compel people to answer me thing. Like, it's, like it sounds like such an, like an angry inquisition that must be... There must be a reckoning at hand now. Like, I, it's, I might as well be shouting objection or something like that with the the with like the tone of it all. I think it's exaggerated by the the noise the sound filter they put over it, where that make that shows that you're using your powers to make them answer. Aha! Now I've unlocked the back door and everyone can come inside and ki and go after Dorothy. <laughs> Ah, uh, no more locked things. There's something about the... Uh, it might be the lack of response from the others that makes it weirder to me. Is the fact that I... It's like, tell me about the, your past with Dorothea. Tell me everything about Camilla, the flower girl. And like the voices echoing and overlapping. And then the person just responds like as if you said that completely normally. Like there's no... They're like, uh, uh, I'm foggy now or something. Jedi mind tricks. So like the drama's one-sided. The dramatic part of the dialogue is only is confined, uh, contained entirely in one of the two people that's talking. Just gonna take all these medical supplies. To be fair, I'll use a decent chunk of them for medical reasons, because one of the primary reasons to loot, I think, in this game is to get resources so you can craft the cures for people's diseases. Admittedly, you do that because you want to eat them, but... <laughs> pay no attention to that part of the story. Sodium hypochlorite. Someone's having some bad drama. Razvan's got issues to deal with. Maybe the last person left? Well, I got two people left, actually. Ah. These are usually important. Letter to Nurse Crane. Dear, uh, my dear Dorothea, when you read this letter, I will be on the boat that will take Anton and me back to Brasov, England. It was not for us, and I confess I cannot wait to see again the proud hills of Transylvania. As soon as we are there, I promise I'll light a candle in the black church and pray for you to survive this terrible epidemic. I know that you do not agree with this decision, and that you are determined to be more useful by helping our comrades exile to the East End, but Anton cannot wait to return to our beloved country and see our long-awaited revolution bloom. He is my husband. I will stay by his side. I know we had our arguments and our fights. I know that you would have wanted me to stand by your side and to help you manage this clinic of yours. But now that I'm leaving England, be assured that if anything would happen to you, if you ever were in great trouble or danger, 
I would come back immediately to London, with or without Anton. Please think of me as much as I think of you. I am your affectionate sister, Theodora. How much do we know about Crane now? Everything, apparently. Gives away medicine for free. She's a political exile and uh, she has a sister in Romania. And she is, she, her social circle is the entirety of Whitechapel. So I assumed that if she dies, we lose everyone here, right? Possibly. I know you look like you're busy and in trouble, but I'm just going to grab everything real quick before I address you. Oh, you need help? Oh, yeah, you need help? You need help? Give me a second. Oh. What do we have here, nurse? <laughs> Patient Raz Van Vassily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Aspirin and salicin, you say? Why not some warm milk and a kiss on the cheek? Where are the quinine salts? Tried buying, borrowing, even stealing. There's none to be found, doctor. He's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel! Hand me that scalpel! What can I do, Doctor? It's too dangerous to operate with these convulsions. Sedative, nurse. Do we have any anesthetics? I'm sorry, Doctor. None at all. I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A toracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. I must... first suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! Cardiac massage. Now. Cardiac... What? Are you making this up as you go along? We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. 
No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. You're here to test my bedside manners. I took cardiac massage to mean CPR because his heart stopped. So what do I owe this but I don't see? fucking know anything about what I'm doing here. Epinephrine? Like an EpiPen? Why it's would you. Locked. Why is. is I don't. That doesn't sound like. You shouldn't be here. That doesn't sound like when you use epinephrine, but I don't fucking know about that, how that works either. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. But why Lady Asprey? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people cannot go to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? very carefully, Dorothy. You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my dead Nurse body. Nurse Crane, enough. Listen as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon- Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities and the resistance are over. Let it go. I'll- I let it go. Yes. All gone. Oh. New citizens available to kill is how the game sets it up. This issue this issue will suffer the consequences of your action. The game's not super clear about what I was making her forget. Literally all of it. She he even said walk away from the shadier streets of your operation. Doesn't that... What does that mean? <laughs> like they're, they're speaking in not entirely specific terms. They're being all flowery and metaphorical about shit. And I don't know if they, they just mean stop blackmailing and stop doing the criminal parts of your operation. Or literally forget all about this everything you're doing to help people and leave. Because you could interpret it as either way and that's kind of frustrating. But they could be in some trouble. Boy, is she worth a lot of experience. I think that this district would be fucked, though. 